Welcome back. Last time we looked at how we can set up transient and AC simulations. In other words, we can now assess how the design circuit behaves. However, we don't know whether the design parameters we chose in the beginning when drawing this original schematic were the best we could have chosen. Should we maybe have changed, for instance, uh, the width of this transistor or the length of a transistor or maybe the DC operating point of this entire circuit? We could answer these questions by changing the parameters in the schematic, rerunning the simulation, assessing the results and then changing the parameters according to our results. The problem with this is that it might take tens of iterations to actually get the parameters right. That's a bit cumbersome though, because we might have to redo that tens of times to find the optimal values. And that's why in this video we're going to look at a technique that we can use to automate that process. Parametrization and parametric sweeps. Before we start doing this though, let's first discuss a simple case of how we could use this optimization technique in the circuit. If we were to go back into ADEL and run the DC sweep that we did a few videos ago, you can observe that in this input to output transfer, the transition from the high to low voltage is actually quite off-center. Ideally, for a matched inverter, we'd want the point where the output voltage crosses the midpoint between the supply and the ground to lie at half the supply voltage, which would be more similar to the green line. This asymmetry in the input to output transfer is mainly caused by the fact that the PMOS and MMOS transistors rely on different kinds of carriers to conduct their currents. The NMOS has an electron rich channel, whereas the PMOS relies on a hole rich channel. Holes have a much lower mobility than electrons, which means that you will get less current in a PMOS's channel for the same size and applied voltages than an equally sized NMOS. To compensate for this, we can choose to make the PMOS transistor wider than the MMOS transistor, so that more current will run through this PMOS transistor for the same applied voltage. The question that then still remains, however, is what width we should actually choose. That is a problem that is perfectly suited for solving with parametrization. So let's dive back into Cadence and get started. First, let's open the schematic of the original inverter, so the INV schematic. Inside the schematic, we're going to update one of the properties of this PMOS transistor. So click on the PMOS transistor, right click, then go to properties. Now in this particular case, we're going to update the width parameter by a parameter or a variable. Let's call it WP for the width of the PMOS transistor. Click on OK, and then always make sure that we run check and save so that the netlist is updated. Now in ADEL, let's look at the left-hand side of this window. This is the section where all the variables in our schematic will be listed. But our new variable WP isn't here though. We can obtain it by simply right-clicking here and choosing Copy from Cell View. And that brings WP to the forefront here. Now if we would run this DC simulation by just pressing on the green button over here, we'll get an error. And that's mainly caused by the fact that WP doesn't have any assigned value. So Cadence doesn't know what it has to fill in there. To address that, we can just give it a default value. So let's do the original 90 nanometers that it had before. Now we can press on the green button to run the simulation and it should give us the transfer that we obtained before. What we can see in this graph is that at an input voltage of approximately 530 millivolts, we obtain an output voltage that lies close to 600 millivolts. So the midpoint of this inverter transfer lies a little bit too far to the left of 600 millivolts. If we now update this value of WP to 180 nanometers and rerun the simulation, we obtain that for an input voltage of around 630 millivolts, an output voltage of 600 millivolts is obtained. So by increasing the transistor width, we shift this entire inverter transfer to the right. Now let's say that we've narrowed down the range of where WP should lie to obtain a matched inverter, somewhere between 90 nanometers and 150 nanometers. Now what we could do is manually update this value, then press on the green button and look at the graph that we obtain. But that's a bit cumbersome, right? Now, the good news is that ADE can do that for you. And it's through a tool called Parametric Analysis, which you can find in the top bar menu under Tools, Parametric Analysis. In this window, we can specify which variables we want to perform a sweep across. And let's set that variable here to WP. 
and we want to sweep it from 90 nanometers to 150 nanometers in seven steps. And let's make that a linear step mode. So it will take a constant steps from 90 to 150 nanometers. Now what that means is that when we press this green button, Cadence will first run a simulation for WP of 90 nanometers. Then it will do the same thing, but then for 100 nanometers and then 110 nanometers and so on until we reach 150. What you can also do is perform a sweep across two or more variables. We can do that with this button over here, add new row, and then choose a different variable. For example, the input voltage and sweep it across another range. The nice thing about that is that we can then assess how the circuit will perform for combinations of the widths and the input voltage. But for now, we're just going to stick to single variable sweeps. So let's delete this row and press on the green button to run this sweep. Once the parametric sweep is done, we get a set of curves that look like this. What we can observe is that as long as we increase the width of the PMOS transistor, the transfer will shift to the right. For the width of 140 nanometers, we obtain the best result out of all of these curves. Here, the switching voltage for which the output voltage is 600 millivolts is reached at an input of around 590 millivolts. So let's stick to that value of 140 nanometers for now and fit it in in ADEL as our new default value. And with that, we can already wrap up this chapter on parametrization. As we've demonstrated, this technique allows you to quickly experiment with different design parameters and optimize variables using sweeps. Next time, we're going to look at another interesting tool to make our simulations even more useful, the calculator. See you then.